What is up everybody? My name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineers Survival 2024. This is episode number two and look at our base. This is the base we built last episode and it looks amazing in the silhouette. I have to say just with the sun starting to come up over there and with the earth in the background on the right, I think it looks good. Uh, in this episode, we're going to try to expand our base a little bit because all we have currently is the bare minimum. Let's go inside and check it out. In fact, if I go inside, you'll notice the air. <laughs> we lose all of our air whenever we open our door. So we're going to need to fix that. And we're going to start with that in this episode. But we've got a basic refinery. We've got a basic assembler. We've got a cargo container. We've got pressurization. We've got power, survival kit, O2H2 generator. And that is basically it. Uh, so in this episode, I'd like to expand our power a tiny bit, hopefully by adding, um, well, some people in the comments last episode pointed out something really, really obvious that I didn't think of. Hydrogen power. If I press G and go to our power tools right here, or not power tools rather, but power blocks, you'll see there's one right here, not here, uh, here called the hydrogen engine, and that allows you to gain power from hydrogen. And how do you get hydrogen? From ice. Um, what is all around us? but ice. So in this episode, I'd like to uh, scale up our power just a little bit so that we can start focusing on ice related power. I'd also like to scale up our refining a little bit because, uh, well, not just our refining, actually, our refining and assembling, I think, uh, because this assembler is quite slow, actually. Uh, if I want to produce, um, let's say I want to produce like 20 of those. It takes a little bit. It's not that bad. But it takes, it, you know, it does take time, right? And I don't like having to wait that long. So I think getting a proper assembler up and running would be good and getting a proper refinery up and running would be good. I think the way we're gonna do this is we're actually gonna build another door over here. Actually, let's start with that. So boom, goodbye pressurization temporarily. We're, we'll bring it back. We're gonna get ourselves a door over there. So let me go to my door block and we're gonna get a the, the same door basically that we have on that side. We're gonna plop right there. Uh, right click that, see if I can build some stuff for it. Uh, yeah, we actually can build it all the way up other than the bulletproof glass, but that's good enough. So now we have our full pressurization back and we have a way into our base and a way into what's going to become our main base. So I think any building that we add from here, we're going to, we're going to extend off from this side. So we want to start by adding a, um, uh, let's start by adding, we're going to do two rooms, I think, but I'm thinking forward. So let's do like a tiny little hallway that we can expand later as well as two little rooms. So can I get some interior plates from here? We have 80 just standing by. Okay, let's hop out here. We're gonna break our pressurization, it's fine. This is temporary, we're not gonna always break our pressurization. Let's grab some, uh, maybe some sci-fi interior walls and I think this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go, uh, is this positioned the right way? I actually want this to face this way. Oops, not that way, this way. Boom, boom. We're gonna make this a tiny little hallway of about two blocks like this. And then we're gonna have two rooms, one right there and one right there. And they're gonna go into uh, basically like a little tiny room that we can expand later. So something like this. Um, and let me get the doors up and running so you can see kind of what I'm thinking of. So we'll put a door. In fact, I'll use my little offset doors cause this is gonna be like an interior sort of thing. So offset doors like that and those will be our rooms. So I'm thinking like this room right here will be our hydrogen based room. So we're gonna have a lot of hydrogen power stuff in here. So let's do like, uh, how big do we want this to be? You know, it doesn't have to be that big, honestly. We can do something like this. Let's grab one of our little hydrogen engines and I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna do, this has a connector on the bottom. So I think we're gonna do it like this. So we'll do hydrogen engine, hydrogen engine then we can expand later. For now, let's just let that be that. So for this side, we'll have like a, you know, that'll be like a, a wall right there. And then I don't really want a double wall. Oh, what are, what are all these things, by the way? That's our parallax. We have our super gremlin over there and we have a, a gremlin XL. I don't know what's worse, a super gremlin or a gremlin XL. I would think the super gremlin would be the, uh, the scarier one, but I guess you never know. Uh, so this is gonna be our like refinery room and it's gonna change later, but for now we're just gonna put a refinery in there. So refinery, oops, not rec, uh, ref. Okay, just throw a refinery in there and we'll throw an assembler in there right next to it. So this is all temporary. We're gonna make a, a, a much nicer looking thing eventually, but I'd like to get these machines up and running before we do anything crazy. That's gonna help with, you know, like filling out all this stuff, getting a couple more excess materials, having enough power to do pretty much whatever we want. So I think I like where this is going. Now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these right there and right here, because I know we're gonna have some conveyors underneath this. Energy 
Uh, so I'll go ahead and use... How do I want to do this? I'll use T-shaped junctions right here. So T-shaped junction, T-shaped junction. And then right here, I'll do another T-shaped junction like this. Uh, and then I'll bring it over this way. So we'll just bring it down kind of across this way like so. I need more... Oh, I need steel plates for these. Okay. Do we have any steel plates in here? I know I just built like 10, didn't I? Did I immediately... Yeah, I don't know where they went. <laughs> I think they went into that door probably. Okay, we'll grab these. We'll go across like this. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll come around into there, I think. So boom, 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 and boom. Okay, so there's our connection. Remove you, remove you. All right, awesome. So we'll now have a connection coming all the way over here. It'll it'll come into these, um, these little machines here and that will allow us to get power. Then from there, I want it to come into this machine right here. So we're gonna do the same thing going underneath right here. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna use a full on conveyor junction right here so that I don't get like a, a uh, an air transfer between these two rooms. I'd like to keep everything pressurized if possible. That's, that's like the main thing I wanna do in this series is keep things pressurized as long as we're on an airless moon like this one. Uh, so let's get our uh, thing turned right here, and then we'll get this turned like that. Okay, there we go. With that, I think we pretty much have like a tiny little base right out here that is uh, that is fully pressurizable as long as we get the walls and the ceiling in and is connected to this base. So let's start getting everything powered up. This is going to require a couple trips over to our, our uh, iron, but I think um, I think we can handle that. Let's get our power up real quick. Oh boy, it really does take a second. You know, it'd be really nice to get a, a med bay up <laughs> running at some point. Um, okay, so anyway, what, what are we going to do this episode, by the way? I haven't mentioned that yet, but I'd like to do this little base expansion. Uh, but also, I'd like to build some sort of little craft to go and check out the Parallax military installation. I don't know if I want to go into it yet, because I don't think it's probably going to be very friendly to us. But I'd like to at least see what we're dealing with over there. So that's pretty much what we're going to do this episode. Base building and checking out the uh, the military installation. As well as maybe, you know, going back and forth to the, uh, the coffee shop over there. Oh, we should build the coffee shop. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we'll start on our coffee shop that we said we were going to build over by the, the coffee over there. C-O-F-E. Um, okay. Uh, what is all this going to take? That's what I want to know. I, I want a, uh, a quote for how much we're going to need for here. So just looking at major components, let's take a look. This is all the major components. You know what? I'll count the doors as major components because they're probably a little bigger than, than, uh, than other stuff. Um, we don't need that door. Okay, all that. What are you going to take? Looking at production, that's going to take 13,000 iron, which is a crazy amount of iron. Ooh, if we're going to get that much iron, you know what we should probably do? We should probably build a little rover that we can drive over there so that we can take back multiple loads of stuff. I think that's probably a good idea um, because we can't keep hauling back and forth with our jetpack. We can only take back like 2,000 per trip and it's half efficiency in this thing. So if we can only take back 2,000 and we need about 13,000, that means we need 26,000, which means about 13 trips. All right, we're gonna make a rover. Let's make a rover, everybody. Okay, so when it comes to making a rover, I was saying I wanna keep this stuff here. And I think the reason for that is because I wanna build a rover based off of this um, this power thing. So if I delete this, the one block in space engineers that, um, or the one component that you don't get back is power cells. So if I delete this, we're gonna lose all those power cells, which is why I wanna build a rover um, off of this directly. Uh, now it's not gonna be that hard. I think the way we're gonna do it is, it might be a little tricky actually. Although I can move this is what I'm just realizing. So you know what, here's what I might do. Let's try and make a flat uh, platform, a flat form if you will. All right, just putting blocks down on the bottom right here so that I can make some sort of platform. And then what I want to do is I want to move you back just a tad, not too much. And then I'd like to get maybe some of these. See if that will, uh, will work nicely. Okay, that does work fine, but I need to move you back just a little bit more. Please don't fall in that hole. Nope, nope, you're not allowed to fall in that hole. You are banned from falling into this hole. I'm putting a block there just, <laughs> just so you can't do it. Because uh, I know I was going to try. Put that there. And let's try and push this guy onto our little platform here. Hopefully nothing breaks while we do this. And awesome. Okay, we got it. We got it. All right, remove these. And we have a good start for our rover. 
It would be, be even a better start if I could flip this over. Because this I don't care about. We can remove everything from here and get everything back. Oh, we have a lot of components in here. Actually, you know what? Before we do anything, let's transfer these over. So that, uh, so they're no longer in here. This is quite a few components that we can use to build later on. Um, by the way, last episode I had said that we were going to make all of our uh, refinery and assembling settings a little more grindy than last series by putting them on times three. Uh, I checked and it looks like last series we also had them on times three, so um, I guess we're just sticking with time three. Maybe we're a times three sort of person, and I think that's okay. All right, <laughs> let's build... Um, what do I want to build here? So for this mission here, let's let's remove everything from here because it's got a bunch of stuff queued up that we can't do. For this mission, we're definitely going to need um, a lot of steel plates. And currently, we have 12. Uh, so here's what I'll do. I stole steel plates from him. Steel, 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 steel. There we go. I now have 30 steel plates that I acquired from that door. All right, the way I think we're gonna do this, we're gonna do a cockpit like that, so kind of offset to one side, which I think is gonna be fine. And then we're gonna do our wheels probably directly underneath the cockpit. So let's use our offset wheels, which are part of the uh, Wasteland DLC. Oh no, wheel could not be placed. Um, is that fine? Mm, yeah, I think, uh, maybe we'll go out one more block and then see if the wheel can be placed there. The other thing I could do is I could put, I could um, put this upside down. But no, it looks like the wheels are being placed fine. Okay, so there's our three by three wheels. Perfect. Then what I want to do... Oh, actually, hang on. Let's undo. I think I'm going to do a bit of a wider stance on this guy. Because it's going to be carrying cargo, so I think having a wider vehicle instead of a thinner one will be uh, good for us in the long run. So we'll go wheel right there, and we'll go wheel right there. Okay, they're both placed. Awesome. Next, what I need to do is I need to try and, like tilt it this way a little bit, which we can do using the same battery method we used over here. Uh, so let's get our vehicle tilting forward a little bit. So I'm going to go block, 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 and then batteries. Boom. Boom. Uh, and I'll put a couple blocks on the bottom so that it doesn't like go too far down. So now when I remove these batteries, it should start to go up. Or not. <laughs> Maybe not. We probably need one more battery here. Put one battery, two battery, red battery, blue battery. There we go. Okay. It took a second, but now it's got it. Okay. I'm going to remove this so that it can go down a little bit more. And perfect. Okay. Now we probably have the room we need to build up some, uh, some, some extra wheels. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this because we no longer need it. So we'll get this guy out of here. Boom. And over here, boom. Okay, there we go. I think that's looking pretty good. That's a pretty sizable vehicle. And we'll be able to stick some cargo along the side, maybe some cargo back here as well. Uh, and this thing is really meant to just carry ores. So I don't really care about the connectivity. Usually you'd want to worry about large versus small connections um, when you're dealing with something that's supposed to carry components. But this is mainly for ores. So I'm not too worried. Okay. Now we shouldn't need any extra components for these light armors. I'm gonna go ahead and weld all these up and then we'll see what else we need to weld up for the other components. Energy critical. Oh, my energy's critical, but we did weld it up. <laughs> Let me refill our energy and we'll, we'll continue on our little thing. And eventually it might be a good idea to build some sort of interior garage so that we can build like a rover or, or like a flyer without having to worry about the elements. But for now, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll be okay. I know being outside makes our energy drain a little quicker because you need to be eating oxygen, <laughs> I guess. But um, so far, I like what is going on here. Okay, so it being a rover, we don't actually need a gyro, but I'm going to stick one on just because having a gyro helps out a little bit, in, uh, in especially in like a low gravity situation here. So we're going to put a gyro on, uh, and then we have to get these things welded up. So you know what? Let's get our wheels uh, welded. Oh, we still have a bunch of stuff in our build planner here. Three, four. One, two, three, four. We'll get all that stuff welded up. And then we'll uh, start focusing on the other components, the actual cargo components of the thing. Okay. There's a wheel. There's a suspension. There's a suspension. There's a wheel. Almost a wheel. Guessing we're going to have some trouble with those large steel tubes, aren't we? 
So what I could do then is I could put everything into production here. Um, and it's not a crazy amount. We don't need that much iron. Do we have any iron in here, by the way? No. Okay, so we're gonna need to go on a bit of an iron expedition. Let's put everything back, make sure we're full on our power, and we'll go check out the iron. The iron is actually at the coffee shop. So you know what? While we go check out the iron, let's bring a little bit of, uh, let's bring some interior plates so we can work on a little bit of a, a coffee shop. I'll bring 20 and we'll head over there. So <laughs> we were joking last episode, C-O-F-E sounds a lot like coffee. So we're gonna make a, uh, a coffee shop on these grounds. That <laughs> pun was not intended there. <laughs> on this ground, we'll make a coffee shop though. Um, and of course we found the nickel after making it coffini. Uh, maybe it'll be the coffini shop, I don't know. And it'll sell delicacies known as coffini. Uh, okay. So, coffee shop, how big is it gonna be? Not that big. We'll just get like a little floor set out for it. Um, I'm thinking maybe like a bar, a couple of tables, and <laughs> that'll be good. It's just gonna be like a platform for now. You know what? We'll just get that. Yeah, there we go. That's our coffee shop for now. <laughs> we'll eventually come back and make it look nice, but for now, we've at least broke ground on it. Well, technically we haven't broke ground, but here, I'll break a little bit of ground for you. There we go. Now we've broken ground on the coffee shop. Um, where is the hole going to our iron? Here it is. Let's get a little bit of the good stuff. I need a little bit of iron. Okay, and this should be full on iron. Let's head on back. So there's our coffee shop, and it might be a good idea to have a, a tiny little like basic refinery or something here as well. I don't know, having having some, having a little refining structure at a, um, an ore deposit I think is a good idea, but We'll decide on that later. Let's head over to the start and get our... Uh, I, should, I should call it home instead of start, shouldn't I? Start's so industrial. So, so mechanical. This is our start. Not this is our home. Which it will become. Okay, let's put the... Uh, the uh, I almost said the coffee. Let's put the fee inside the um, basic refinery. We don't need that much. We only need about 300 something. So I'll go ahead and grab all this stuff once it gets to about there, throw it inside the refinery. I'm gonna let this start building the stuff we need, which isn't much, just a couple things. In fact, why is it so little? We need three large steel tubes right here. And this says we're only building one. It was a little suspicious to me, but who am I to complain? With that, we're able to get another wheel done. We're able to get a another wheel done. We're able to get a suspension. And I'm guessing that might be it. No, maybe another suspension, but not another wheel. What about this guy? Yeah, we're able to get our cockpit done and we're able to get some of our gyroscope done. It's coming along. And there we go. Okay, with that, I think all the wheels and everything like that is done. So we have power on this thing. I think we can move. Perfect. Now, the gyro is going to help us. So it, why is it creating so much ice particles? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, let's go to our K. Actually, before we do anything, this is where um, build vision helps out quite a bit. Uh, I can go into these wheels and I can input the name of them. So I'm going to call this wheel uh, LB for left back. Or maybe I should call it BL. I don't know. Oh, no, this is wheel BL. The other one's wheel BR. Oops. Every, everyone's going to have a slightly different uh, way of doing this as well, uh, keeping track of wheels. I usually do, you know, back left, back right, front left, front right. This one right here is going to be uh, front left. So boom, boom, front left. There we go. Florida. Wheel Florida, wheel France, wheel Britain, and wheel um, British, Lithuania. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. Okay, what I wanted to do is I wanted to grab my back wheels here and I wanted to tell them to do no steering um, and honestly do no propulsion as well. I'd rather have my front wheels do the propulsion and the steering and I think that's gonna be okay. Then go to all the other wheels. I wanna tell them to not do a crazy amount of power. Uh, strength is fine. In fact, we'll make it even a little higher just in case. And I think everything else is gonna be good. So now I should be able to drive around in fact, maybe I need that power to be a little bit higher. Or maybe what I need to do is I need to get my <laughs> back wheels propulsion again. There we go. Okay, I kind of like this. Although I'm noticing they're having a little trouble steering. So maybe I need to use my gyro for that. 
<laughs> That's where the gyro comes in handy. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, stop this right outside our base here. And let's get some uh, some cargo containers on here. By the way, you'll notice if I go into this, if I press K and go to info, it's, it's still called Welder Gen 3 because it's the same grid as the Welder Gen 3 that we crashed with from last series. So it's kind of like repurposing a new thing. We'll probably have to rename it eventually, but for now, it's the Welder Gen 3. Carried on. So I've got 49 steel plates to, uh, to mess with. What I want to do is I want to grab this. I'm going to put this right back here, I think. Something like that. Okay, and then directly from that, I'm gonna put something like this. Okay, let's back this up just a little bit so it's right there, like that. Then I'm gonna put another one right here. And then on one of the sides, I'm gonna throw an O2H2 generator because I think it's gonna be good to have some sort of, uh, some sort of um, oxygen here. So O2H2 generator is going to go on that side just like that. And then we're going to have on this side a hydrogen engine perhaps. Let me see what space that takes up or what options that gives us. Oh, uh, it's being weird. It's being really weird. There we go. Okay, hydrogen engine and I should be able to place it like this. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll do it like that. And maybe I'll double that up. I don't think that'd be such a bad idea. Like so. We'll put a little ba uh, baby conveyor in right there to connect that. And then over here on this side, I'll probably put some hydrogen tanks and oxygen tanks. Yeah, okay, I'll do it like this. We'll do two hydrogen tanks right there. And then if we want an oxygen tank, we can put one in. But for now, I, th I think it'll be fine. With that, I will need some sort of uh, connection right here. There we go. So we'll have two hydrogen tanks, an O2H2 generator, hydrogen power, as well as some of this. No survival kit, which is fine. Um, that would be kind of nice to have on this, but I think that would take up a lot of space. Uh, and then actually what we could do, we don't necessarily need that. We could put an oxygen contain, an oxygen thing right here. The problem is they don't have a little skinny oxygen thing. This is the oxygen tank. It's huge. <laughs> so it's kind of awkward to put in, right? But actually, you know what I might do? What I think would be actually kind of cool? If I bring this all the way back to about there, and same on this side, back one more, yeah. I can maybe make like a custom cockpit to cover this, and then I can have a little uh, vent come out. I think that'd be neat. Actually, you know what? This seat I think makes more sense to use instead of that one. If I'm trying to do something that's gonna keep me covered and oxygenated, I think having the other seat makes more sense. So let's cut this one out. Let's cut you out. And I'm gonna check out what this one has to offer. I could do like, uh, oh, hang on, what would this one look like? This one would be cool, but I don't think it really fits with what I have going, unless I was gonna bring this all the way out to the front. But I think, what's that one? That's a helm. I don't need a helm. Oh, a cab cockpit, hang on, we could try the cab cockpit. What connections do you have? Ooh. I kinda like the cab cockpit. If I put it on the front like that, then what I could do is I could have little connections. Where's my O2 H or O2 container? I could do like that with my oxygen thing. Then I could have like cargo coming this way. Ooh, I kind of like this. This thing's getting more and more complex, but I kind of like how it's going here. So then what I'd do is I'd put the um, the gyro back up here, probably. Okay, and then can I build the cockpit? Yes, so I can, except for the bulletproof glass. And the cab cockpit's new. I haven't actually used this in a survival series. This one's like probably the newest cockpit they've added. Um, so I kind of like it. Okay, I think this is what we're gonna do. Let's try and build up this guy, if we can. There we go. Okay, so with that, I now know that I can do something like, yay, okay, that's, this is what I wanna do. All right, I, I think this is gonna look cool. Currently, I've only got the uh, the connections on one side, but I'll, I'll add them to this side again um, eventually. Or you know what? Maybe I'll add them now and then just not weld them up or something. All right, we've got it planned out. We've got all these connections that are going to be cool, I think. Um, 
we have this one coming all the way down and then around through here and then up through there, which is going to be a nice connection up to there. Uh, it also connects to that guy and that guy. Then we have this one that comes all the way down through here and connects right up to this guy right here. I could probably simplify this if I wanted to by making it just come out a little bit like that. Uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't have the same connection it can connect to right here, so... But I, I think it's going to be fine. Unless I come around to through here and then up and over into there. Which, honestly, might not be a bad idea. That might look better. I don't know if I like how this one looks. There we go. What do you think of that? So it's going to connect all the way back through this guy, giving us a little bit of redundancy through that direction. Okay. I think this is going to be good. And in fact, I don't even know why I was trying to connect this. There's not even a connection there. So I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, let's try and weld up uh, this side over here, I think. We'll weld up at least all of these blocks into there. Then we'll get these... Con uh, these um, containers done, and then maybe I'll do the O2H2 generator. I think from there, we'll have most of the ship done, and we can at least go on a little uh, trip for some iron. So, let's see if I can get some of these done. We're gonna need some motors. Motors and steel plates. Maybe we can get the cargo containers done. There's one. There's two. I want to check out the storage on this guy now. So, look at these. It has a storage of 10,000 liters compared to our 1.2 thousand liters. So, um, that's 20,000 liters for the full thing. The cab cockpit can store 3,000 liters, so that's basically two of us. And then we're eventually going to add a connector on the back, which is going to be able to store another um, bit as well. Let me see if I can get a steel plate for this. Plop. Okay, you only need 34. We're about to run out of iron, which is <laughs> perfect timing, actually, because we're also about to get our ship up and running. There we go. And let's build you up first. That's going to be our O2H2 generator. And let's build you as well, our connector. And we'll see how much our connector can store. So looking at this, our connector can store 3.4 liters, 1,000 liters, which is about two and a half of us or so. Um, in fact, that's almost three of us. Okay, so this is going to be really good then for our uh, our hulls. Uh, I think it's about time to take it on, our, on its first journey. Our power is at 93% using build vision here. And... Yeah, I think this is good. Uh, maybe I'll give it a little bit of ice, or maybe I, I don't care about ice until I get there. Then I'll add a little bit of ice. Let's use third person here to uh, see where we're going for a second so we don't crash. And then I'll go into first person because it looks cool. It does have that truck feel. You cannot see what's under you, which is scary, but also kind of cool. Okay, let's head on over. Oh, we're getting a little bit of lag as things spawn in up there. In fact, you can see it. Let's turn off our, uh, our HUD there. You can see it right up there. Just flying around. I think that's kind of cool. What is that even? It looks like there's two hired guns and a super gremlin over there. So we don't really want to mess with him. Let's head on over to our uh, to our iron. It might take a little bit to get over there, but it's going to be worth it. We're going to bring a haul back. We're going to bring a lot. Maybe we'll customize all these too. We don't really need to know what the gravity is. Um, maybe that middle one's fine and the power one might be fine. I don't know, but we might customize these. You know what I've never tried is writing a script for one of these. That'd be so cool to have a script tell me what... Like, what would I want to know? I'd probably want to know how much power I have. I'd want to know how much weight I have on me. And... Uh, maybe speed. I know I can put speed in here already. In fact, this one shows speed. The, the number on the left there in the center screen does show speed a little bit, so... Oh, actually, I've got speed in the top there. Okay, that's good. That's actually kind of cool. All right, here's our coffee shop. I'm gonna take you to the coffee shop. Ah! Oh, oh, we're going too fast! Oh my god, that was close. All right, note to self, this thing does not have the best braking. All right, let's let's um, park in between the coffee shop and our iron deposit. Skirt. Uh, I'm actually gonna back this up here so that it's easier to put stuff in. Beep, beep, beep. Perfect. Parking brake engaged, and we're good to go. All right. Um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of ice while we're here. Actually, wait, there's ice down here. Might as well just, just grab some of the ice that we already have down here. And I'll throw that in here because we have an O2H2 generator on there. Which means that should suck up all the ice and start producing some oxygen. You can see that's starting to fill up. Nice. Which means now when I go in here, our oxygen should fill. Yes, it does. Perfect. All right, things are working out swimmingly. Let's head uh, down here and grab some iron. I'm just gonna grab everything from here. Inventory. We gotta clean up the hole eventually, right? Don't take that out of context. 
In fact, you know what would be really cool is if I, if I could put like a... Uh, I think I did this at the start of the last series, actually. <laughs> and then it never really caught on because we eventually built mining ships and stuff. And we'll probably do that in this one, too. But if I built like a little cargo container and it, it hooked up to a connector up there, so I could just put things in the cargo container down here and it would automatically put them into the ship up there, that would save us a couple trips. But in fact, we might do something like that eventually because we're building the coffee shop up top. So we might as well like make this a whole operation. You know, put like a big mining set of mining tunnels down here, maybe some stairs going down, some like uh, some conveyors going down to the bottom. I think that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, we're going to continue to get iron. Uh, I don't think I'm going to show all this, so get ready for a jump cut. But when we get back, we're probably going to have a lot of iron on board the ship. I'm probably going to do maybe like, I don't know, 20 trips back and forth like this. And, uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. My he, my ha, my ha. My ha ha. All right, last trip. Uh, we've probably done, well, we've probably done close to 20. Let's see how much we have. Um, 8K, 26K, 8K. <laughs> All right, so that's 16 plus 26 is gonna be 44K plus what I put in here. And that's gonna be, you know, 40, 46K. I think this stuff is almost full. This one's full. Oh, that's the cockpit. Okay, the cockpit's full. One container's full. The other one is a little bit, and then the, uh, where's the, where is the, um, oh, the connector's not even almost full. But actually, you know what, let's do, like, two more trips, and then we'll, then we'll go with what we have, because I want to fill up most of this stuff. So, two more trips of iron, and we'll be ready. So, remember, we only needed about 23k, uh, for the base upgrades we wanted, and that's only for the, the main components, so maybe double that for the walls and ceiling as well. Uh, which means, with what we have, I think we're pretty much going to be good for uh, for base upgrades this episode. Okay, last trip. And we're going to be coming back with around 50k iron. Let's head on back. First person, because it looks cool. And um, I think this ship looks awesome. This is a really cool looking ship. We're a little bit slower from the, uh, from the stuff we have, but not a crazy noticeable amount. Let's head on back. Head on back. Head on back to the base, yeah. Yeah, cause we're gonna head on back. Head on back to the base. Oh, we're flying. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. All right, suspension, get ready. Cause you're gonna, you're gonna deal with this. Oh, there we go. I think I learned a little bit from uh, <laughs> um, uh, Mobile Survival on how to deal with a, a bit of a mountain. We gotta be a little careful. We don't wanna lose all the iron that we just got which is what would happen if we exploded into a billion pieces. This is why you want a gyro. Gyros are helpful. Gyros are life. So the other thing I want to do, I think I maybe mentioned this earlier in the episode as well, but the other thing I want to do with this, all this iron that we have is I would like to try and, uh, and make like a little drone, a tiny little drone to go check out the parallax military facility over there. Uh, I think a little drone with a little camera on it will go hard in this situation, uh, helping us find out what's over there because I want to perhaps in episode three or maybe in episode four um, go and check that thing out I want to go attack it I want to go see what they have for me who knows they could be the people that attacked us on AMG Sandstorm I don't know who those guys were let's get out of here and we're gonna have to load this stuff manually unfortunately because we don't have a connector but I it, it's 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 fine <laughs> let's do a couple trips bring this stuff in and uh, oh we can't put it in here can we because that's not connected we got to put it all the way in there all right, no worries. We'll do a couple trips. That's the ice. We don't care about the ice. We care about the iron. How are you doing, by the way? 2K? Okay, I can get you started on this stuff then. Let's throw this stuff in the basic assembler. I don't know. Yeah, you didn't have anything to do anyway, so... Um, let me grab my... this thing. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and put some of our major components in there. So maybe just this these big things right here. And we'll let it start chipping away at that stuff. So shift middle mouse button to put that in the build planner. And then we'll we'll keep bringing stuff over. Okay. Now that we got that going, I, I feel better. I feel like we have things, you know, things are moving along in this episode. I was a little worried that maybe we'd uh, not know what to do or, or, or something like that. But I think it's going well. I think we're going to have two new rooms soon. And that's going to help us out. Now, I think the first few episodes of a series always go very similarly. I've done probably... Um, well, gosh, I've done this. I've probably done four survival series so far. This would be the fifth one. Um, there was season one, which was in like 
2018, season two, season three, and then the 2021 series, which lasted three years. And they all start about the same, right? You build like a little mini base, episode one. Episode two, you start getting a little bit better when it comes to production, stuff like that. Episode three, sometimes you're still working on the base. I don't know. It's, it seems like once you've seen one, you've seen them all when it comes to survival series early episodes. Um, but episode three, I'm gonna try to do something a little different, maybe by attacking that guy right there. Who else attacks people on episode three? Probably a lot of people. But you know what? We're gonna do it better. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna survive. No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what is over there, and I don't think that um, it, it, it is. It is labeled a military installation. Okay. Do we look like we have any military power? No. <laughs> but we do know where magnesium is. By the way, speaking of magnesium, um, you guys commented last episode that that uh, I I saw magnesium over there and titled it MI, or I waypointed it MI. So it is actually magnesium, not nickel, um, which is good to know. All right, now that we have our home done, let's go ahead and grab back our stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this stuff here, and let's see if I can build up one of these. We can almost build up a full one of these. That's pretty good. Just need some construction components. Let's see if I can grab some from here, because this thing has been chugging along this entire time. Okay, so that's gonna be one hydrogen engine, which is good. It means we can get some power. Not that we were really lacking it in the first place, because so far these plus our battery have been doing really well. Uh, but once we get these guys online, the refinery and the assembler proper, it's gonna it's gonna cost a lot of power. So we're gonna need these for sure. These are gonna require a lot of metal grids. And the one thing about metal grids in Space Engineers is that those require cobalt. We don't have cobalt. So you know what we might do now? I think I might do a quick trip over to grab some cobalt. I'm not gonna take the... Um, the, what do you guys think its name should be? I'm not gonna take the thing. <laughs> I'm gonna instead fly over because we only need about one inventory full of cobalt. Cobalt refines very, very slowly and it gives you uh, quite a bit from one inventory. So um, the cobalt is right there, but I remember seeing it down next to the iron. So I think I'm gonna head down here and I'm gonna make myself a little tunnel over to the cobalt. So let's go ahead and grab some of that. There it is, the nice blue stuff. Not to be confused with the other blue stuff being the ice that's all around it. I'm gonna grab as much of this as we can. I'm gonna deposit any ice that we grab. Okay, there we go. It's an inventory full of cobalt with about 3.1k. Let's head on back with what we've got. And hopefully this will be enough for a, for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna throw my cobalt in there. And uh, let's grab all this stuff. Low. So the cobalt's... Look, the cobalt goes really slowly. You can see it's gonna t it's gonna take a really really long time to get through a little bit of cobalt, and in, in order to get one cobalt, it takes like uh, ten seconds or something. Whereas the iron goes much quicker here. We're getting a lot of iron very quickly. So yeah, cobalt's a cobalt's a fun one. How are you doing? Okay, see, it's trying to make one thousand steel plates. It's gonna need nine thousand iron, which we'll eventually get. In fact, we almost have that much in here already. 8,000, yeah. And we have plenty more to, to refine, so we'll eventually get that much. Plus we have 15k right here. By the way, if it bothers you that my doors are open here, you can see the door right there is open to the outside. Don't worry, we're, we only have it open because we're coming and going, doing construction here. But once we have this construction done, it'll be a lot easier to, uh, to keep the base pressurized. Um, because this door is going to open into a hallway which is going to be pressurized, and these rooms as well will be pressurized also. So... Don't worry, it's it's only temporary that we have the base <laughs> completely unpressurized. This is basically going to turn into a pressurization room. So all this stuff is going to get moved to its own room, and this will be sort of like a, a double door airlock system. Um, okay, what were we going to do? Right, I was going to do something like this. Um, if I can put a block right here. All right, so the reason I'm adding these T-junctions here is because I'd like to add two more hydrogen things here. I don't know that we're going to need these, so they're not going to be welded up yet, but we'll have them there. And then how we're going to do this is we're going to have some button pedestals, like so, and we're going to have one facing this direction and one facing this direction. So these will be operated separately. You can turn these two on or these two on or both, depending on how much power we need so that we can operate it, you know, um, in whatever way we want. So, okay, that's going to be the room, plus, you know, a couple of, a couple of these. Boom, just like that, we'll have a little window. And that will be kind of our uh, our room. Walls on that side, walls on this side. 
There we go. Let's see how our, our building stuff is doing, our, our um, assembling. Okay, nice. We got some stuff. Let's head on over to this next room over here and try and build this up. We're not even going to get close, but <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Just going to take a couple of uh, trips. That stuff's still assembling over there, so I think I'll do a little bit more design work while we're at it. Let's do um, up here. I kind of want to make this like a vaulted ceiling, kind of like that. So we'll have that go all the way down on the edge there. And then over here, we'll kind of reverse that so that it kind of comes up like that. And I think that'll be fine. In fact, maybe I'll put these there so no one can actually walk back here. I think that'll be kind of nice. Something like that, something like that. There we go, that'll be our ceiling for that side. Now the ceiling's not completely done. You know, there's there's blocks here that I need to put, but in terms of this room, it is the complete look, okay? So um, yeah, I kind of like how this is going. We're gonna need to build all these up, which is gonna take a lot, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Um, at least we'll get these main components done in this episode. Just had a heart attack looking over and realizing OBS was uh, not on my other screen. I was like, did I start recording? That's happened to me before where I've done like half an episode and, I've, and I realized, oh, I never started recording. Rip. It is a thing. You can ask anyone who uploads videos, they've probably had it happen at least once. And it's, it's, uh, it's a horrible feeling. Because then you're like mid-episode, you're like, well, <laughs> I guess I'll just restart then. There we go, we now have a proper refinery. Um, I suspect though that this requires a lot of power. Yeah, 560 kilowatts. Um, and considering we're only generating about uh, 410 plus 423, I don't know if I want to run it because that's going to use up um, 500 out of our 800 power. All right, so if I do shift middle mouse button one, two times, that should be all of the uh, connectors that we need. Looks like we actually need more nickel than we have, which means it might be a good idea to go get some of that. We have most of it, but in order to create those engines, we do need a little bit of it. So uh, let me go on a quick nick uh, nickel chip, uh, nickel trip, I can't talk, in the dark, nickel trip in the dark, and we're going to grab a little bit from our Coffini outpost. Uh, and I'm just praying that I don't run into anything important. <laughs> But we should only need one inventory of it, and it'd probably be a little bit better for us to take the, the rover so we could get a little bit more. But, I mean, it's just a quick trip. Just a quick little trip. And I remember this hole being here somewhere, but I can't find it. Don't take that out of context. That's a rule. The rule, if you're watching this series, you must sign the contract. You're not allowed to take anything out of context that I say. <laughs> Anyways, where the heck is the... I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, it's somewhere here, I swear. Caffini, please help me. Okay, nickel? It's gonna be over in this direction, right? Because I know it's closer to home. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Do I make another? Okay, I could have sworn there was a little hole going down to get nickel, but I can't find it. So, we're making another one. When in doubt, make a second hole. That's the motto that I live by. So let's go and grab some nickel, and with that, we'll be good for for what we're trying to do. Just one little inventory trip of nickel. You know what I should put on my rover? I should put a lot of lights. Then it would be like really, really good to bring it when it's dark especially, and I can't see anything. All right, nickel, I'm gonna grab a little bit of you. I hope you don't mind. Just gonna get uh, a, a, just a little inventory full if, if, you, um, if that's okay with you. It's for a good cause. We're building a base over yonder. Okay, we got a little bit of the nickel. Let's head on back to the base. There we go. Assembler's built up minus the steel plates, but I think that's okay. So we could use this if we wanted it to go a little bit faster. And truthfully, that might not be a bad thing to do. Um, if I tell all my production stuff in here. Can I switch it over? <laughs> I don't think there's a way to tell it to go to the other. Okay, you know what? It's fine. We'll let you continue our production for now, and then we'll turn you off after he takes over the main production. It'll be okay. We will survive. First I was afraid. I was petrified. Kablam! Looking good. There we go. Those hydrogen engines should now work. Now, disclaimer, I every single time I've tried to get hydrogen engines to work, I've had trouble. They, uh, they always are a pain in the butt for me. 
Look, you'll notice that... Actually, you won't notice anything. Hang on. Can I get into here, maybe? If I press K, inventory... Or not inventory, but uh, go into here. You'll see that they're filled 0%. Now, they should be being filled because they're connected to the base, right? Through that, they're connected. And the base has hydrogen. If I look at my O2H generator, you'll see that there is, in fact, ice in there. But it's not filling these guys. So what gives? Is always the question I have. I always have to turn them off and on. Eventually they'll decide that they want to start working, but it takes a second sometimes. You know what could be as well as maybe they don't need to work right now because we're not drawing enough power. So let me do that and see if that gets them to turn on. Uh, okay, what if I turn off my battery? <laughs> Will that get them to turn on? Nope. No, that didn't do it. Wait, yes it did. Okay, that did get it to work. All right. We have success. We now have O2H, or we now have hydrogen power running. Okay, there we go. So with this, I can actually go in here and group my two hydrogen engines as uh, hydrogen engines A. And now I have a little button right here where I can turn them off and on. Perfect. Let's get this room pressurized, because I think that's going to be a fun little task that we can do. So make sure nothing's in our build planner. We're going to grab this, this, and we're going to start <laughs> grabbing a lot of stuff, I think. Uh, oh, this is going to be fun. That's a lot of stuff to pressurize. But here, I'll put this in the, uh, I'll put this in the thing to start doing. And then I'm going to count blocks. Okay, we need about 70 of these blocks, which is a lot. But what that means is I can just right click one of them, uh, like this one. And then I can come over here and do a control shift, boom, boom, middle mouse button, and that'll put 10 in production. So I do that two, three, four, five, six, seven times, and that should have put 70 items into our, no, I don't think I did actually. Did it do it again? Okay, that's done it one more time. How are you? Okay, we have 50 out of 50, so we can't put anything else in our, th so we have about three and a half in the queue right now. Uh, so, how much iron is that going to take? I have to wonder. That's not going to take that much iron. In fact, we have it all right there. We have 8k right there. Okay, yeah. All right, we can do this. We got this. Um, I'm actually going to need a vent as well, which I, is one thing I haven't thought about. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll turn that one into a... a, a um, here, I'll, I'll just do it. <laughs> Instead of talking about it, I'll just do it. We're gonna turn this into a T-junction facing this way, I guess. We can come back here and we can build ourselves a vent. We'll use the new vent, just like we did earlier. And we'll put that, I think, with the um, with the green thing up there. Perfect. There we go. And what I might wanna do, actually, is I might wanna put like a, a cargo container next to this, like maybe right there. Um, which is something we did on the AMG Sandstorm last episode. We put cargo containers pretty much every so often so that we could always um, get into the uh, um, the network. And I think that actually worked really well. So let's put this up right here. Nice. We have a window looking out like that. And let's get a cargo container right there. So just a small one right next to it. We'll right click that. Grab as much as we can from here, which isn't much. And we'll just put everything, we don't need to build it right now, we'll just put everything into uh, production. Or actually, on second thought, maybe it would be a good idea to build right now. Because that would allow us to um, get things and put things into production really quickly from that room. So you know what? Hold my tongue, I will get it quickly. And just like that, we now have cargo. But anyway, yeah, that'll make it a little easier. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of this as I'm building all this stuff. We have things in production. It's going to, you know, it's going to go a little slowly, but I need to basically weld all of these. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try and weld a little bit of it and then come back when we're a little bit closer to it being done. So um, I'll, I'll put 10 more into production here. Boom. I can put a little bit more if I can. There we go. We've got a full queue. And let me start doing this. <laughs> grabbing stuff and welding. So I'll be right back once I have a little bit of this done and see you in a bit. As I'm building this, off in the distance I see there's a gremlin light. <laughs> we were just talking about the, gr the super gremlin versus the XL gremlin, which I think is kind of funny, but there's a gremlin light. So 
if we go for one of those ships eventually, I think the Gremlin Light might be the one we should uh, we should try. Um, and also, while I'm here, I want to try something. Let's go into production. I want to try building ourselves a better tool. Because these, it looks like, require silicon, cobalt, nickel, and iron. And we do actually have those. So uh, let's go with an enhanced one of each of these. I don't think we can build level two because it requires silver. And we know where silver is, but I'm lazy right now. I don't want to go grab any. <laughs> we'll eventually do it. And then we'll get our level level two um, stuff. These are requiring cobalt, so I need to actually give this some cobalt, which you have all of right now. All right, and let's go ahead and throw our normal tools back in here, because what I think we can do now, let me just check. Yep, we do have our level two tools, so let's go ahead and put those on our um, on our hotbar here. So level one, level one. I called them level two tools a second ago. They're technically level one tools. They're they're one level above basic. Uh, okay. Oh, we're out of energy. <laughs> Whoops. All right, last few blocks right here. Where uh, we've almost got this entire place pressurized. We've got the inset lights built right there. We've only got, um, I believe it's just these two, and then it'll be pressurized. We got a couple more over there that we could weld, but I don't think they're required. Let me see if I close this. Are we pressurized? No, we're not. So we've got, ah, yes, those guys. Let's see. You and you. How about now? No, still no. Okay, so there's a block somewhere that, ah, okay, under there. And here we go. This should be it. Okay, now, surely... Surely you will, uh, you'll pressurize. Let's find out. Hop inside, close the door, and let's see. Pressurize? No. What are we missing? Um, is there a block somewhere? What could it be now? Ah, are you it? You might be it. Yes, you're it. Okay, let's grab some blocks here. Get you welded up, and then suddenly... The door's open, probably. <laughs> Suddenly, once the door's closed, magic happens. Yes! Okay, we have pressurization, finally. All right, this room is fully pressurizable. Um, of course, I'm gonna break that there. This room is fully pressurizable. Now all I need to do is get the hallway fully pressurizable. I'm not gonna do this room for now right there. This, this big um, room right there, we're gonna keep it unpressurized for now. I just wanna get these other rooms pressurized uh, for this episode. So... Let's get a couple of these, put them right there, right there, and right there. Okay, there we go. Something very simple for pressurizing this hallway so that we can say that we have a fully pressurized main area. And let's get this stuff welded up. I, I said already, but I'm gonna say again, this is probably gonna continue that way. Um, it's just, we're just capping it off right now so that we can pressurize it and then we'll continue it later. All right, there's one side. Looking good. Next side. Well, <laughs> it's like we only had enough for one side. Let's see if we can get the other side done too. There we go, there's another side. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do as well, I'm gonna remove this guy right here. And I'm gonna replace him with a vent facing this direction. We need a steel plate. So let's try and grab uh, that. Perfect. Put that right there. And we're gonna need five computers. So I'll put this in production there, and hopefully we get those five computers soon. Actually, I'm gonna fast track those, because otherwise they're gonna wait for the entire list of stuff to make. And there we go. There we go, all right. We now have our vent in here, so this is soon gonna be a, a viable hallway, I think. Okay, with this next block, right? Well, this block and this block. And, oh, okay, okay, four more blocks. We're almost there. Okay, that block's technically done. Looking around, I think that's everything. So with that, I now pronounce you um, sealed. Let's close these doors. And these should, yes. Okay, they now recognize that it is a sealed area. And what we can do is we can close this as well and open this however many times we want. It's, uh, it's sealed on its own. Yep, 
this room is sealed on its own, and this room right here is sealed. So we can now navigate through all of these rooms without losing air, which I think is a win. <laughs> we now have the startings of a base. Now I might eventually put some windows there or something. I don't know. We've got some work to do on the base eventually, but for now I think that's what we're going to finish with base editing. There's one more thing I want to do in the uh, in the video, and that is I want to check out that military installation. So for that we're going to head outside, and I have to of course lose a little bit of air as I do that, but we're going to ma uh, maintain the air inside the rest of the base. So we'll lose a little bit of air and we'll come on over here. So what I want to do is I want to turn this into a tiny little drone that I can use to scout out the military installation. Now this is not go- this is- I mean it's gonna be a very tiny drone. We're basically gonna make a little drone with a camera and that's it. Okay so let's start this out by trying to get this into a favorable position. We'll try and get it up there. Come on. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> okay, luckily it landed on the steel plates mostly, but now it's in a, like a more favorable area, so I'm fine with this. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a drone looking thing. Well, if we're building a drone, we're going to need an antenna, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we will. Let me think. Can I just put an antenna on this little bit here? I have a better idea. Scrap that. Scrap that. Scrap that. Scrap that. I have a better idea. Okay, what we're going to do instead, we're going to remove this antenna. We don't want it anymore. Instead, we're going to put our antenna on top of this. And I think that's a better idea in the long run. So we're going to go with a... We need two things, actually. We need an antenna, which we're going to put right here, like so. And we need a uh, remote control, which is going to allow us to control things remotely, as it um, suggests. So we're going to put those on there, see if I can build it up. So what this means is we should be able to, uh, to control our little remote control drone from here instead of trying to control it from the base, uh, which will be a little bit more efficient, I think, because building a, um, building a proper antenna on top of the base will require quite a bit. Okay, but anyway, while that's working, we're going to need essentially the same thing on here. So we'll need an, an, a uh, remote control. I think it faces that way and we'll need a antenna as well on the back so i'm gonna go ahead and put the antenna like so bam okay now we're gonna need some rust and some gyros and stuff like that so we're gonna have a little baby connector right here to allow it to connect to the base and recharge i've got another battery up there then we're gonna want a camera to allow us to uh to look and we're gonna use the old camera i think we're just gonna put it on the front like this there we go we're going to want some thrust, so I'm going to go ahead and do something like this, which I think is going to look cool. I'll put one like that, and one like that, and we're going to go with uh, thrusters. And these, we're going to use the new ones, so these tiny little thrusters here. There we go. Boom. Right there. Ah, don't tip over. <laughs> and, uh, oops. Right there. Okay, here, I'll, I'll tip you back over. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, it's going to tip the other way, but it's it's fine. Okay, so we've got everything we want there. I'm going to want a uh, gyro around the back or something. One thruster on each side. All right, and that there is going to be a drone, I think. We'll give it like little feet as well, because it's having a little bit of trouble there. So some tiny little baby feet <laughs> as well. There we go. Weld up everything and we should be good to go. Okay, let's get everything welded. It's going to take a couple trips to get all this, but we should be able to get it um, because we should have the stuff at base. Okay, that should be everything for this. There's the gyro, another thruster, little connector to allow it to connect to base, another battery, radio thing, and this. Okay, so we even have room to add a couple more things. We've got some room up there, some room up there. Um, if we wanted to make this a combat thing, we could easily add like a gun and a gun. Uh, but for now, it's just going to be a reconnaissance thing. Um, am I missing anything? I've got uh, thrusters in all directions. I've got control with the remote controls. I've got battery power. I've got a gyro. I think we're good. Let's color it a little bit differently. We're going to give it a dark color here so that it's very sneaky. Uh, and I'll give it a nice... Um, where is my... I'll give it a nice frozen paint job. On second thought, I'll give it not a frozen paint job. We'll make it clean. You know what? It just came off the shop, right? We'll give it a little bit of white as well, maybe, on the side wings, like so. 
Something like that. Just like a, a very sneaky little <laughs> little camera. Now, how are we going to charge this? That's a good question. For now, I think we're going to do something very simple by uh, doing a gyro, a rotor rather. Critical. Our energy is critical. It's fine. We'll do a rotor on here. We're going to remove the top bit. We're going to add a small head. We're going to turn on rotor lock. And then we're going to put one of these things on there. So with that, once we build this up, we should be able to um, uh, to land it on there and, and charge it. And perfect. Okay. So now if I want to get into that thing, I think I can actually head over to here, hop in here, press K, go into remote access, and grab our small grid right there. We'll uh, press G, put the camera on the main thing. So view. We'll put our connector here on switch lock and we're not going to do anything with our batteries quite yet but let's hop into here and we can fly around check it out i tried to go into third person just now <laughs> how much power do we have we have seven minutes of power or less so you know what let's hop on here let's charge for just a little bit and then we'll uh, then we'll get going i'm gonna hop out of this for now because i can't actually control it with my suit um when i'm very close so if i press k i can go to remote access small grid right there, and I can control it like that. Ooh, that thing looks cool. I kind of like it. Okay, land it right there. Press number eight to connect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, grab our batteries, call these drone batteries, and I'm going to tell them to... That's not what I meant to do. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I put a block under it, so it hopefully didn't crash very hard, but what the heck? What did I just do? All right, that was kind of weird, but I got it going again. I think I turned my, um, I think I set it to recharge before it was actually connected here, which is weird because I thought I had connected it already, but let's see. Okay, so here we're gonna press number eight to connect. Then I changed this up a little bit. So instead of setting all of them to recharge, we're only gonna set two of them to recharge. So these are the main batteries that we're setting to recharge. And you'll see that two of them went to recharge mode while one of them is staying fully charged. So hopefully that won't happen again and we should be good. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now we're going to give it a few seconds or a few minutes rather, and then we're going to go out. But I'm going to cut that out so you don't have to wait with me because we're pretty much done with base stuff for now. Um, actually, you know what? You know, I I I'll get some of this stuff done. Let's do that. We're just going to get some of this stuff up here done that we hadn't gotten before. And I think that'll look pretty good. All right, we've given the drone enough time, and I think it's about ready to make its voyage, so let's get it going. I'm going to go ahead and turn or tell this to switch lock right there, and then we'll hop in here, press K, and remote access to the small grid. There we go. Grab that, and we're good to go. I'm going to press K real quick, go into info, and call this drone. Let me know what you guys think we should name it. For now, I'm just going to name it drone, but put in the comments what you think would be a good name. We have about 10 minutes of flight, five minutes if we're using full power. Let's go ahead and check out what this military installation has. Um, we also have a gremlin over there, but I don't think we want to get too close to him. Although maybe we will. I don't know. I really don't know how far these guys can shoot. <laughs> so that's what I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, how far are we? So we're about a kilometer away from base so far. I don't know what the range is on these guys. Hopefully it... Uh, Hopefully it's it's high. All right, let's check out what we've got here. How close are we? We don't want to get too close. Okay, what do we have? Oh man. Okay, that is a that's a fortified base. It's also using some uh, some wind power. I don't know how it's getting it to spin that fast though. Um, we've got just a basic turret right there. What looks like an assault cannon turret, as well as three more assault cannon turrets. Uh, assault cannon turrets. One on each corner of this base. Okay. So there's something down there. Maybe we could hit from range. I don't know what that is. Can I get closer? I don't know what the range of assault cannon turrets is, so I'm a little bit cautious here. Still have five minutes of power. I wonder if I can kind of get a little bit up here. I mean, I know it's not more than 1.2 kilometers, so we're, we should be in the clear here. That guy's not looking at me, is he? No, he's not. Okay, good. We have a little bit of a lighting glitch going on, but um, yeah, looking at it, those assault cannons look scary. I suppose what I could do is I could maybe get in a very, very fast car and drive really fast into the wall right here because these look like they might have a blind spot aiming downward just looking at it. Although this guy right here, sorry for the, the high sensitivity, that, that happens when I try to move this since we're so zoomed in. This guy right here might be able to clear that blind spot, so that kind of worries me a little bit. But it might work if we have like a really armored car and we just drive straight into the wall as fast as we can. 
Um, other than that, this is a better blind spot coming in from this side because they have this big thing right here. We could also get on top of it. Now, if we get on top of it and go straight in, they're going to shoot us because that's what they can see. We could dig underground, but that's kind of far. Hmm. I don't know. We're not going to attack it this episode. Let me know what you guys think about our options here uh, looking at this. Uh, let's check out the, the... Well, it's six kilometers away now. I mean, I can zoom in on it, but... There it goes. That's the Super Goldman uh, XL driving on by. I wonder if we can go... We can go check out our little coffee area. Hey, this is cool because we can actually see ice as well. You see those little... or uh, Not ice, but oars. There's oars right here. Um, in fact, I wonder how high we can fly with this thing. There's some ores over there that I haven't checked out. Uh, and actually some over there as well that I haven't checked out. So maybe those would be good options to go check out. Some over there even. Oh, there's ores everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we know what we want to do next episode, which is going to be attacking this guy. I don't know. Let's, let's RTB over here. RTB for retasking. <laughs> We're going to head back to base and... Um, and, and get this guy back on the charger. But that was kind of cool to see uh, to see what's going on over there. These cameras are really helpful going around zooming in and stuff like that. And we'll bring it down slowly. That should be connection right there. And we'll put it into recharge mode. Again, The um, only the two will go into recharge mode so it can maintain its power and stuff like that. Just in case. But anyway, I think that's going to be the end of episode number two. We did quite a bit. We got a lot of base work done. In fact, let's test out our new airlock system. This right here, one door. It's going to power up the uh, the room pretty quickly. And by the time I open this door, we're fully um, uh, we're fully pressurized. And there's some lights in here. I, I still need to configure these, but I think I'll do them off camera. Uh, and then this room, of course, it, it looks like a room, but it's not actually pressurized. That would that would uh, get rid of all of our air. But anyway, I think this was a pretty good episode, and we did quite a bit. So um, let me know how you liked it in the comments section, and let me know any suggestions you think for the future, especially how you think we should attack uh, that military installation, which we might try and do next episode. Um, but anyways, if you like this episode, please hit the like button, put any comments and suggestions down below in the comments section. If you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to join the Discord or become a Patreon, um, join, uh, check out, check out the uh, description where those links are. Um, with that, I will see you all in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival.